Welcome to Beans and Breakdowns, a podcast dedicated to bridging the gap between specialty coffee and the heavy music community. On this episode, I'm joined by Noah Aviles Betel from the band Friction. So grab a fresh cup of coffee and wake the fuck up! What is going on, Caffeinated Crew? Today, I'm with Noah from so many bands. I'm just going to name the ones that like are on the top of my head. So like Friction, So Perfect. You're in So Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Nine Million, which shout out Nine Million with the audio tree come through. Um, Real World, is that still a band? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So those are like, I guess, the top four that I know, but I know you have some other stuff that you do as well. Okay. Sour Key, I think, is also in there. Yeah. yeah. So, but how are you this morning? I'm doing great. Yeah. How about yourself? How are you doing? Great. We were talking a little bit before, um, just like in recovery mode, you know, when like your phone is on, like you can only use like the calling feature cause it's. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, getting the gears going for the day. A little, uh, it's yeah. Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. You doing anything tonight? No. And it's very un-American of me, I guess. Um, you're, you're American, right? Yeah, I'm from Bro, the south, from? but we're I'm from Georgia, so we're more like college oh, football. Oh, okay, tight, tight. The one time that the Falcons went to the Super Bowl, uh, they blew a 23 point lead. They, it was yeah. the highest. It was the highest record lead in a Super Bowl in history, and they blew it to the Patriots, which is a double L. So, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to be a fan now. So, anyway, do you do you have a team? Uh no. I'm not a sports guy. I'm go, like, I'm going to hang out with some friends because they're going to have people over. I'm like, yeah, I, uh, I couldn't know less about fucking sports. <laughs> Do you fuck with the food, though? Um, What, like, yeah, the Super Bowl, like, getting wings and pizza oh, and shit, yeah. of course. Yeah, Wings and pizza and beers. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, our friend... Um, Max does a a Super Bowl thing every year and he's always like um yeah cooking up like I don't know homemade buffalo wings going crazy with the food. It's pretty I bet buffalo wings in Toronto go way harder cuz you're like kind of right there. So you'll have more of like the influence. Yeah, I have no idea actually. <laughs> There's one spot uh Duff Swings. Have you Oh yeah, I heard about, I heard about Duff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That spot's awesome. They got like um, the death and the Armageddon wings, and then they have like a a board that shows like who's eaten the most, and it's like it's disgusting uh, to think that you know some of these people have eaten like fucking like fifty wings of the hottest shit that I like. I could never. Um. Yeah, I keep it. I keep it mild. <laughs> you keep it mild. Oh, not mild. No, medium. But okay, on the milder side. Yeah, that's. I can't take meat. I'm very white. Uh, so yeah, like yeah. I can't, there's no way that I'm going to be able to do it. Also in Montreal, we don't toss wings. I don't know what the deal is with that. They don't put sauce on the wings. I don't know if they also don't do that in Toronto. Really? Yeah. No, no. I mean, not like a wing connoisseur, but no, like the wings <laughs> are dressed and like wet and it's gotta be wet. Yeah. They're just dry. Do they come yeah. with like sauce on the side or on the side? So you like order a sauce and you think it's going to be on the wings but it's not it's in a cup on the side interesting i get the logic but no like i want i don't know something about wings it's like um i don't know you know it's tactile you want to like <laughs> you want to get messy you know you want to have the roll of paper towel beside like i don't know having it be like neat it's, you're losing the fun if I, if I don't have to use a moist towelette by the time that's over, yeah, I feel like the job wasn't done. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, well, enough of the wing talk, I guess. I'm not a wing connoisseur either. I didn't mean to drag us into that. I just figured <laughs> a little wing talk on Super Bowl Sunday would be dope. Uh, yeah, no, it fully makes sense. <laughs> like it, it had to be done. Um, I know that you're not so much of a coffee person, but do you have yeah. anything to drink on your side? today yeah yeah i got uh an earl gray tea 
that's my jam and then i got a uh, little like tropical ginger smoothie on my side and then and then my nalgene my trusty nalgene but yeah damn straight that's like straight up like uh that's that's like recovery good recovery like, yeah yeah, yeah. I, i've been uh like drinking a i mean no i'm, I'm kind of like back on it but um i did like a little like sober three months or something back mm -hmm. like in the summer uh up until uh when so perfect came to montreal in november because i don't know something about montreal i just I want to party with my homies and um yeah, yeah, yeah. but um but before that in the summer like whenever i was drinking i would be like rocking kombucha like something like i just told myself you know like it helps your gut or whatever um you know if this was six months ago i would have kombucha beside me um but um yeah i feel like the ginger does it I yeah know. read something about that <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never been a kombucha, but I do like fermented stuff like outside of beer. So I I think it's worth the try for sure. Wait, what um what are other fermented bevs? So there's like kombucha, the um what's another one that I really like? That I can't put my finger on it right now. But it's fermented. Uh not ginger beer. Fuck. I know that's ginger another Ginger beer is so good. It's just got yeah. too much sugar, but it's good. I can't, yeah, I can't but remember like something about the the carbonation and the spice from the ginger is so nice. And then there's that like ginger beer. I, I don't know. I forget what it's called, but you know what I'm talking about? No. There's like a oh, fuck. I wish I could name it, but it's like an alcoholic ginger beer, and it's oh shit. I usually just do like Moscow, oh. like the Moscow mules. Oh yeah. That's just amazing. So good. Yeah. yeah. I have some coffee. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about your, uh, what you're rocking. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, Cedral. It's a Costa Rican bean. It's from Pilot. So shout out, uh, shout out. I think they're from like in the middle of Toronto. So yeah. Oh, tight. Um, but this one tastes like Nutella, cranberry, and like some smooth kind of mouthfeel. Whoa. When I ground it, and smelled it it smelled like nutella oh see if i yeah if i was to drink coffee that sounds awesome hazelnuts nutella i recently found out that nutella is like like insanely unhealthy which i wish i didn't know but because i don't know they did good with the branding though you know that stuck in my yeah. head when i was a kid you know people eating it for breakfast um yeah but no, I go nuts for hazelnut Nutella. That sounds so nice. It's it's very good. It's I was yeah. worried when I was reading it because um, it's like a very light roast coffee, um, and the process is it's it's like a honey process. It's one of the weird kind of more experimental experimental processes of like uh, producing coffee. Okay. But the notes didn't line up with what the like what the roasting and the processing profile was. So I was kind of, this is a little bit nerdy, but I was just like very intrigued by how they got some of the more traditional notes to come through on a coffee that the way that it's like made would have been very fruity. Right. So interesting. Uh, the cran that, I think that's where a lot of the cranberry taste is coming from. Yeah. Um, which is like, it's a bit more sour, a bit more, I don't know, grapey. So. Okay. Nice. Nice. Do you drink wine? No. <laughs> no, just like the, all like the notes and stuff. It just reminds me of like, mm -hmm. um, I used to work at a restaurant where we would do like wine tastings and stuff. And, um, yeah, like does this like, um, then knowing all the notes and stuff like that, did that come with time? Or did it come just from like knowing that you like this and you're like, ooh, like, cause it, it's totally reminiscent of the way that, um, what you're describing. It just reminds me of my old coworkers that would just talk about wine and. Yeah. It's, I would say it's like, it shares some similarity. So like a sommelier or somebody who like does like yeah. the wine. Um, so the flavor compounds in wine, I can't remember how many there are like in each 
glass of wine or something like that, there's like a couple of hundred flavor compounds, I believe, or something like that. Oh, whoa. I like, didn't even know that. In coffee, there's 500 or more flavor compounds. Whoa. Uh, so it does share like a lot of similarity, but the palate, yeah. it's it's all, just all about developing palate and things like that. And like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. like there's just so many variables now. Like it used to be like the main variable would be like where the coffee was grown. Cause a lot of it was just like wash process, which means that they would just wash away. Like uh, the coffee yeah. would sit in pools and then it would wash the, the cherry and separate the bean. Um, okay. So it was pretty easy to kind of determine just based on like where it was grown. But now it's like, yeah. you've got different experimental processes like honey or anaerobic where they ferment the coffee bean away from the seed over like a number of hours. So yeah. now, now it's all this like, process and contributing to bringing out different flavors in the coffee it's it's so bizarre and time consuming so i do feel like i used to be very excited about it and now at a point it feels very tedious like trying to figure out what the tastes are and like why they are the way that they are it's it's challenging but it it never came from wine i have friends that are like sommeliers like junior sommeliers yeah. and stuff and uh they're also very intrigued by coffee but to them it's even like very overwhelming. Yeah, no, it, it makes sense. Yeah. I wish I got into it. I just, um, like, I think the main reason is just like, it doesn't, uh, sit right with my stomach. Yeah. Uh, like I I've had maybe like, a, like less than a dozen cups of coffee in my life. Um, uh, at first, you know, I accepted it of just being polite and then going back to that same person's house. I'm like, you know what? Like, uh, didn't make me feel so good last time. Um, so I'll, I'll pass, but, um, <laughs> But, you know, I, I, I sip people's coffees every now and then, you know, but um, yeah, that, that makes sense that there's like more flavor compounds than wine because um, it's so strong and like striking. Yeah. So like that doesn't surprise me. Um, yeah, and just that's cool. The way of preparation is so different because uh, a wine, you know, you, you press the grapes really, really mm -hmm. hard and then you let that ferment. Right. With coffee, you've got like a seed that you dry out, then you roast it and like basically cook it and then yeah, yeah. you grind it up and soak it with water and that's how you get the drink. So it's like a, yeah. instead of like wine just being like kind of a two part process or three part maybe process, coffee is like a six part process to getting oh, it yeah, yeah. into the cup. So it's just like, it's similar, but it's also like very different. I don't know. How no, that... yeah, no, I, it's definitely very different. I just, um, I just drew a similarity between the, yeah, the tasting and the notes, the That's... palatizing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, I, I, uh, I wish I liked wine. I wish I could be fancy, but I'm not. Yeah. Um, maybe we will one day, you know, for me. Yeah. Like when I drink, I just, I, I, pound, like I crush beers, you know? I don't have the like self control to just you know have a glass of wine. I, like wine drinkers don't chug a bottle, you know. <laughs> Maybe they um, do. Maybe. They do. Yeah, no, I'm I'm sure, but you know, it's you definitely sip it fat, uh, slower than you sip a beer. Yeah, I wouldn't beer say you like, sip a beer. The beer is like get it out, like let's go. Yeah, yeah, it's crushable. How'd you get into like heavy music? I know that like some of your bands are, are pretty rock forward. Like, yeah, um, yeah, for sure. But you, friction is not and real world yeah. is definitely not rock music. Um, so. Well, yeah. So, um, I was always like, like in high school, I played in punk bands and, you know, went to like punk shows like that. My, uh, intro into heavy music, like starts with, um, going to like DIY, like basement shows and stuff like that. Um, and then me and my friends, we started, uh, I think like a huge, like a, the reason I'm into like music with breakdowns, I, I think it comes back from getting into um, Gate Creeper. Um, Cause we were like into death metal and stuff um that like i don't know we we started rocking that kind of stuff and then yeah um 
I think my um, my old friend's older brother was like friends with um, like Chase from Gate Creep because um, my friend's brother lives in LA. They were friends, and then yeah, my homie's like, dude, have you listened to this Gate Creeper band? And then we were just into like, like they're very mid paced, and I think like that's like a a shining element of them is that like they definitely combine like this hardcore element with mm -hmm. like headbanging metal shit. And then, yeah, I think we kind of just went down a rabbit hole of like heavier bands randomly. Like I remember like trail of lies was in the rotation at the beginning, like a lot. Um, and yeah. Um, and then like the real world started like, Pretty soon after we got into Gate Creeper, we were super into like Bolt Thrower and like this like death metal with mosh parts kind of mm -hmm. shit. And um yeah. And then um it's kind of like it's kind of funny, but I'm just like gonna be honest. I um what really like pushed me over the edge into like this like tough guy shit was um the fact that me and my that friend that I'm speaking about and um we had like a little bit of a falling out we're like on good terms now but at the time um we kind of like had a breakup and um i think like i honestly had like an identity crisis and wanted to just like get into some like something new so i kind of like ditched my like punk identity you know and was just like i'm into i'm into this now um which i don't know i don't even i feel maybe it's weird that i'm talking about that but whatever yeah um and then like that guy left real world and then real world became like a lot more like even more breakdowny and kind of like um i don't know really into slipknot that kind of mm -hmm. um yeah and um yeah and then i just like the shows that i chose to go to were just more like were just heavier mm -hmm. less um less punk shit i'm trying to think of the first time i saw like violent moshing i don't know if i can remember yeah i was gonna ask like what was the first local toronto show that you went to like ever yeah um it was urban blight's last show um okay. not dead yet like 2012 uh so i was like 15 or something um and that that was cool that was kind of like a middle ground of what my future held in terms of like lots of like I don't know, like egg punk and chain punk and shit like that. Um, because like uh, Boston Strangler played, Rival Mob played. That 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 might have been the first time I saw it. Like, I just remember the whole hard luck was like, like actually what's in my head is the whole room was moving. Mm -hmm. Like, and was like a side to side. And it was, it blew my mind. Um, Hounds of Hate played that show. Urban Blight, like were crazy people were like uh throwing firecrackers and shit it was oh, yeah so cool um yeah that's like i don't know like you go to a show and you're like nervous <laughs> yeah um but that's probably also because it was new to me and all these people are staring at me and shit because i'm not dressing the part but whatever and then you know slowly got into that um yeah yeah, and then I think uh I know the first time that I ever like threw down was um to like candy and year of the knife. Fuck. Uh, not dead yet when like backtrack played. And I remember like I specifically remember Candy playing like um Love Wants More Love. And I didn't know how to two step. And I was in there, but I didn't know what the fuck I was doing and then I don't know when I learned how to two step, but yeah. Picturing you not knowing how to two step is so weird to me. Because you have like one of the best two steps, like so good. Oh. He's like last week or a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to, uh, um, Ty from Baytown hardcore. And yeah. we we're talking about, you know, Neil Cortez. Yeah. Yeah. 
he's got such a good mosh style. Yeah. And yeah. when I think of like Toronto, oh like good Toronto moshers, like on that list, I think of, of you, cause your two step, you do this sweep thing. That's very like original. And okay, I always, sick. me and me and Ryan are always like, how the fuck does he do that? It's crazy. <laughs> man, that's sick, man. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, de- my, um, my two step is, um, influenced by Lee from Rays. You know that guy? No. He's, um, he's a gem. Yeah. Um, sings for the band Rays, plays drums for the fact and Bliss Fields. Okay. okay. Um, and yeah, he, like, I'm going to be entirely honest. Like, I am influenced, like, my moshing and even like my stage presence. Like, he does this thing where he shakes his head and jumps about and, He's just like, uh, yeah, a savvy looking mosher. And I, I definitely like my two step is definitely influenced by him and like, mm-hmm. and like, uh, Nikki P from the fact too. There's some fresh, fresh moshers. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's all about just, you know, taking what you want, you know, L- looking, um, taking inspiration from other people, you know, did you ever practice that their, their moves are entirely original. They're, definitely lying um yeah <laughs> did you practice in the mirror at, 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 at all i didn't practice in the mirror um but because I, I was definitely like even just moshing in my room yeah of course i've done like the bedroom moshing but bedroom, um, parking lot, i like parking to think lot that moshing? i was just sorry parking lot moshing I don't think I've ever done that. No. Oh man, <laughs> man, like no, like um, yeah, moshing outside. Uh, I don't know. It's it's funny, but like um, no, I've I've never done that. But <laughs> I would always just like do it in my room or in my living room or whatever, and then I'd fucking like hit my hand. Like I remember one time I had to like cancel on band practice because I like swung into like my speaker and I fucked up my hand. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I I try to just like, you know, if I'm listening to hardcore in my space, I'll just try and move a little bit, you know, like to not think of it as practicing as much as just like enjoying, but no doubt I'm, I'm practicing. I have a vivid uh, memory. I, when I first learned how to like windmill or whatever, I took a video of myself to like, I'm like, am I doing it right? And I was listening to eternal sleep and um, I was like, Oh shit. Okay. I got it right. <laughs> um yeah and then you put it on youtube yeah went viral yeah how to how to windmill yeah yeah uh i love um the trend of tiktok where people are teaching people how to mosh um i haven't seen that i've just seen the tiktok moshers they like you know i I love you know people getting into it but it it it, it irks me i'm not gonna lie there's some cringe yeah, for sure. Well, I'm just waiting to see somebody that I think has style uh, post on TikTok, but but they they won't. They because I think they don't want to be in the pool of all this fucking cringe TikTok moshing. Yeah, I like uh, Stanley Seavers. How he kind of makes fun of it, like the 30 year old coming out of mosh retirement. Yeah, yeah. Where he yeah. does like the oh, goosh, goosh, goosh. Okay, I was like, is that the guy that, yeah, that guy's funny. That guy's funny. And then yeah. there was another one that got, like, pretty big. It's the singer from this band called Kind Eyes from, like, the Bay Area. Okay. Uh, I think his name is, like, Murphy, I believe. Mm-hmm. But there was the video of the dude from Hate Five Six getting the beer smashed, like, the dude. Oh, that video is so lovely. Yeah, and it's, that like, why you so don't drink. Funny. It's It's yeah. amazing. And there's no way that it, like revisiting it there's no way that it wasn't planned oh for sure that is uh that's target moshing for sure but i can't lie that like um it bugs me when people like um have their back to the band you know like i i love i'm all for crowd participation but um if it's obvious that you're only there to like push people or mosh because it's always the people that don't know how to fucking throw down that are eyeing the whole thing and like yeah. kind of maybe like scheming like how do i get in there um but 
I I remember one time some show at Seascape. There was this like metalhead guy that was just pissing me off. He he had his back to the band the whole time. And I remember like I grabbed his shoulders and like turned him around. I was like, look at the band. In hindsight, I was being a, a huge dick, but <laughs> he was bugging me so much. And I remember uh, like Seb from Category um, was like, are you good? Like, is it like, what's wrong? And I'm just like, I'm sorry. This guy's just pissing me off. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was being a, a dick, but I don't know. I let the demons win with that one. The intrusive thoughts. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. That's fucking dope. I, 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 I've, I've had moments like that where like, I see people, um, like when somebody's doing side to side and they're like jumping up, like, and like, you know, throwing back yeah, into yeah, the yeah, yeah. and then I, I've seen it where like new kids or, or like newer people would be like trying to swing at them, like from the side. And at one point, like I like shoved somebody and I was like, don't fucking do that. And yeah. it was like, it was, um, it was like somebody who's a friend and I didn't realize who it was at the time. All I saw was them like throwing at yeah. people and I was yeah. like, don't fucking do that. And then they, they afterwards, they came up to me and they're like, what did I do wrong? I'm like, I'm like, I'm sorry. I was like, I didn't realize it was you that was doing that. I was like, but, <laughs> but just be careful. If somebody's coming side to side like that, don't swing at them. Like put your arm up, you know, guard against it, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. definitely don't throw shots at somebody like that. I was like, that's a good way to get in a fight. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, definitely. It's it's weird. I um I don't really know like I don't think there's like a rule book of how you start to understand like mosh politics, but um I think it's about just like having friends who do it and like striking conversations with them and stuff. Um mm-hmm. yeah. Like I it, it, but you know, to your friend's defense, like I kind of understand like someone's coming at you, like you, you know, but (laughs) obviously like they just don't understand that that's like, that's like a move and they're not jumping into people to like hurt them. They're not like, yeah, yeah, I I get that. (laughs) Like throwing throwing a punch back, it's like, you're going to get in a fight. Like, yeah, it makes sense. I just don't want to see them get, get beat up and like, yeah, of course. Or cause like a big issue. Like don't, don't, don't throw shots at people. They're not going to hurt you. It's okay. Yeah, no. Fights at shows, it fucking, it ruins the the vibe. I hate that shit. It, it doesn't happen like too often in Toronto, mm-hmm. but when it does, it's like, honestly, it's like the only thing I can remember about the show, no matter how good the show was. It's like, I just remember, oh, there was a fight and like that I don't know, threw everybody off. It, and then it, like the awkward, like, people who weren't involved moshing after it's like it never saves it you know yeah the the night's always tainted that's the first time i saw gavel it was there was a fight broke out i don't even remember gavel i just remember the fight yeah so yeah it's true yeah that just sucks did you start playing drums before guitar or after guitar uh exact same time pretty much really yeah um my dad um is a fucking like salsa like legend like my dad rips at guitar um he's like a pretty well-rounded musician um when i like i think i was like hey can i like learn guitar my dad like fixed me up with one of his friends to give me guitar lessons and then i think like that night or something like this you know he's just like i set up the drum set like come come check this out and then I just started playing drums um yeah like i was i was like 10 years old um started playing drums at the same time i started playing guitar um i was definitely way better at guitar for the first few years i remember i didn't use the kick drum for like the first two years i was just using my hands and then mm-hmm. um the next two years i was just using like like my the kick drum to like keep time I didn't know how to play a proper beat for like four years. And I remember when I learned like the, like one, two, three, four, like the boom, tick, ka, tick, boom. That was one of the greatest feelings of my entire life. I was like, I got it. Fuck. I got it. Um, and then, um, then I got a double kick pedal 
Oh God. Started learning like metalcore songs like gent stuff. Like I remember I learned how to play like an Amir song on the drums and I was like game over. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, yeah. And then just started a band when I was in the 10th grade. That's when I got into um, when I went to my first show. It was like, yeah, like 15, like 10th grade. And um, yeah, because I was into metalcore, like Gent and shit. I was in like eighth and ninth grade. And then I had this friend who was like, it's like plaid pant, like mohawk, slicked up guy. And um, he was like, that shit is lame. You, you should come to this show. And then took me to that Urban Light show. <laughs> um, yeah. I've all, yeah. It's kind of embarrassing, but I've definitely like followed the herd a lot of my life. You know, I was like, oh, okay. Metalcore is not cool. Like, okay. Cool. Okay. And then, um, yeah. And then later in high school, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm my own person. I, I love that old shit. Um, and I love this new shit. Let's just like, not, um, no more judging, you know, dude. Like I love Parkway drive. Like, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. That shit was hard as fuck when it came out. Yeah. That song's amazing. What's the other Vail, one? Very Maya. Whenever. Yeah. Carry on. Holy shit. And then yeah. uh, when Vela Maya Vail dropped Maya. that first full length, holy shit, I had never heard it's, music like I, that. I still listen to that um, like all the time. That, um, yeah, that whole record, like the there's like two intros on it, like the first song and then maybe like the fifth song. Mm-hmm. Something so eerie about it. Um, yeah, Vale of Maya, fucking fantastic. And that guy who, um, I don't know his name, but I have like the, what's the, A Common Man's Collapse or whatever, that CD. The guy who um, produced that record also did Born of, Born of Osiris. Okay. The, the New Rain. And um, the production on that shit is just ridiculous. Like it sounds so fucked. I remember that's the first time I ever read like, like engineering and editing by because like the they had to credit like piecing it together because it's mm-hmm. so ridiculous. Um yeah. No, that shit's to this day, I fucking love that shit. Yeah. It's something so oh. like like I don't know how to describe it. I'm sure you're the same way. Where it's like I fucking love violent music. I love dumb dumb smooth brain music. Yeah. IQ lower. Like, yeah like i love breakdowns and just dumb shit like my wife and i were listening in the car yesterday we were listening to uh devourment and that's just like stupid slam like doo-doo music and it's so good but then yeah like i'll listen to even and nobody if y'all come for me i swear to god because this is canadian but protest the heroes first two albums dude sequoia throne blood meat like immaculate immaculate um people want to clown on that shit and i i guarantee you everybody that clowns on that shit can't play a note from it so if yeah. y'all, y'all y'all can take that that's fine no dude i mean i i, I get it because it's like um I, I mean honestly if someone was like yo what are pro- like what are protests the hero influenced by i couldn't tell you um, but the singing shit, like I, I get it, you know, it threw people mm-hmm. off probably. Um, also being Canadian, you know, people think, yeah, whatever. Um, but, <laughs> um, no, there's some, the riffs on that are like unbelievable, unbelievable. Like, um, yeah, I, I got the, um, what is it? Fortress? Is that the album? Mm-hmm. Fortress. The, the second one? I got like the, the tablature book. And um, I tried learning, um, I think my favorite song off that album is, uh, what is it? Fuck, what is it called? It's like the sixth song. I'm going to, Limb from Limb. Oh, yeah. That song with like the keyboard solo at the end. I tried learning that and I was like, no, I, I can't do that. Uh, I tr- and then I, le- I learned Blood Meat. That one's like the easier one. <laughs> but yeah, dude, no. 
that um it's so technical it's mm -hmm. so impressive um yeah man those those technically proficient bands just like so so tight um huge influence i remember i was just like i really wanted real world to be like a guitar band like i wanted to be like this like um i don't know just like move a lot but also be able to have the technical proficiency i don't practice nearly as much as i did or at least like for that stuff i try and just like keep my songwriting chops up for so perfect i'm I, I go through waves of what i'm working on whatever but um yeah i just really wanted to be like sepulter like machine head those bands that have guitar player singers you know i was gonna tell you like i when i listen to real world i hear cavalera just that's all like yeah no totally sick as fuck yeah i'm not i'm gonna just be honest again i got into sepulter because uh real world played not dead yet like 2017 probably and we played with incendiary and um some other bands i can't remember but uh lucy from primal right um friends with like leah we met um like at damage city fest like years prior to that um came up to me and was like i hear you're like the riff writer i played drums in real world at that time but i was like kind of like the songwriter and she was like that sounds like sepultura and i was mm -hmm. like intimidated looked up to lucy i was like oh yeah dude totally totally super <laughs> super inspired by like sepultura and i go home and i check out sepultura <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then like yeah and then like chaos ad like that shit rips and me and my friends like uh yeah we love chaos ad broods mm -hmm. i actually know like i'm also you know open book i never got into like um the prior albums but i know that they switched up their sound like they went from like you know death metal to kind of like I don't know what chaos, what you would even classify chaos ideas because it's like pre roots. It's like pre new metal era, but there's something really funky about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah. And then obviously roots is just like, you know, they saw new metal taking off and then wanted to jump on that. But my favorite part about that, like the quote unquote new metal parts in roots is actually just influenced by a lot of indigenous, like Brazilian music yeah which is no, so totally. or, like original dude that like rama hata song or whatever so fucking cool yeah no that record is balls to the walls it's so it's like a master master killer new metal record for sure for sure yeah no, i agree no skips um that's uh yeah we were we were when Bruiser Weight was driving down to Ontario a couple weeks ago and we put it on and we were all like, cause I don't know if a couple of the younger dudes don't like Alec definitely listens to Sepultura in some frame, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure if, if Ryan was a super big and I'm sorry, Ryan, if you hear this and you were, but I don't know if, if he was <laughs> a big Sepultura fan. Um, but we put the record on and he's like, Holy shit, this is crazy. Yeah. No, it's, it's fucking amazing. Yeah, no, like, um, Sepultura had a hold on me for, like, when I first listened to it, I was, like, in a trance. Like, similar to, like, when I first heard Life of Agony. Oh, yeah. That was life-changing. Completely life-changing. I was like, this is the best shit I've maybe ever heard. <laughs> I know people, like, hate on that. Like, I feel like, people have a love hate relationship with that band or no, either love them or hate them. Yeah. I don't trust the people that I hate them. It's like, what, or what do you think? <laughs> no. So my thing is I don't, I don't hate them. I actually, I love like river run red is in my list of top albums, like probably ever written. I've listened to it yeah. cover to cover so many times. Don't skip any songs. There's like, endless breakdowns, but also like some of the most beautiful melodic shit ever. Yeah, yeah. Like the songwriting is completely incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that uh live it's a little bit different. And I know that they took like 
I have this thing about bands taking long breaks when hardcore or like shit was not cool. I don't what know do you mean? So for a long time, you know, bands like refused and like, yeah. uh, like life of agony took a long break. Um, when like, um, after their like third record or whatever, I think they like, cause before that, that FYA that they came back and headlined, was it last oh. year or the year before? Yeah. 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 They took like, five or six years off because they were like life of agony was never i don't think as big as like i think they wanted to be like a typo and they never reached that like point. that makes sense yeah so they kind of yeah. like did other things for a while and then when hardcore started coming back after covid and they were like oh we're gonna come back and play river runs Red. yeah but it was the 20th anniversary i get it like that's fine yeah it was just for me it seemed a little like ride the wave and if oh no i fucking um I hate reunion shit. <laughs> like, I, I um I had a like obviously a soft spot for Life of Agony. Like I saw them in Toronto. Like I threw down. So like I had the time of my life. That shit was all tour. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but even in my head, I'm like, you know, they're just trying to. I mean, no, it's it's special. Oh, but yeah, I don't like when bands like come back from the dead. I think if you choose to die, you should like honor your death. <laughs> yeah, like let it be um, a peaceful. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. No, people riding the wave of hardcore coming back. I'm like, and then headlining festivals, and you know, I feel like it's few and far between when these bands actually live up to what they like the energy that they used to have, you know, mm -hmm. um, like trapped under ice. I love them. And I, I feel like they're a band that did come back and like the energy is still pretty much where it was. Oh yeah. But like, they're, they also didn't take like as long of a break. I think just like angel dust happened and you know, you can only be spread so thin when your band's like traveling the world, um, with turnstile, like, Everybody kind of like just popped off, did other things like Brendan Turnstock exactly. got so fucking big and yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, no, but TUI still goes so hard. So good. Yeah. I've only seen them live once, unfortunately, but that was amazing. I saw part of their set at Outbreak, but it was just so many people that I, I don't know. It was very overwhelming. And you couldn't mosh. There was no way to get in, like, to where the pit really? was. Yeah. Dude, I, um, my friends went to Tide Down, and I was really jealous. Um, just looked so big. And, like, Outbreak is just so big. They're moving it back, though. It, this past year, it was way too big. It was, like, 10,000 people. But they're moving it back to where it was the year before, where it was, like, a 6,000 cap venue. Okay. And that was like way better. It was crazy. I saw You've basement. Been times, or yeah, I saw. I went two years in a row. But basement, color me in kindness, in twenty twenty two was unbelievable. Damn, I cried. <laughs> That's so sweet. But uh, yeah, I yeah, I love bands that can still maintain the energy. But also, and this is no disrespect to Justice. I think he's such a good fucking frontman, but. It it is it was a little bit like, oh y'all came back at the right moment, huh? Like y'all are super hyped now, and yeah, everybody's yeah. been asking for it. But uh, I I still love it. I'll go see it and enjoy every fucking minute of it. Yeah. So, I also love New Angel Dust. Then y'all you played the Montreal show. Oh yeah, I actually um I was just a nine million fill in uh for the longest time, and that was i think like the first tour where everyone made it <laughs> so i actually didn't play that show but um yeah that um which i'm fucking bummed about because candy are one of my favorite mm -hmm. bands right now um but yeah they played that montreal show um at foofs so you're not show. in nine million no i am now <laughs> oh okay 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 i'm like officially in the band now okay um so the audio tree was recorded before you were like, yeah, I'm not okay. in the band. I'm not, yeah. Which is, you know, damn. That's like, I watched the video. I'm like, where the fuck is Noah? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's for the best. I would have fucking talked my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched every audio tree for 10 years. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, if I have a camera and mic in front of me, as you are experiencing right now, I'll just talk and talk and talk. So I feel you. Are you one that like, um, like silences bother you? I'm realizing it's, um, um, directly correlated to like insecurity. So I try and be cool with it, you know? Um, but, but no, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, no, I totally want to break the silence. Yeah. Especially, you know, like, I think when I met you was like that, like a night where I was kind of like stepping out of my shell. Cause I just, I hadn't seen Dialone in a really long time. Um, really wanted to see cohesion. And I was like, you know, and I think the Steel City guys are like awesome. Like Rob and Jordan are so sick. So it was just like, yeah, I'll, I'm free tonight. Like I'll, I, I bust to Hamilton or trained or whatever by myself. And, um, and I was definitely kind of just like hanging about with like whoever I could hang out with, you know, and that's definitely a night, uh, the, the kind of like position where I'm like trying to chime in as much as possible to like show that I'm, <laughs> that I'm here, you know? <laughs> Um, because yeah, the silence makes me uncomfortable. No doubt. Were you at Madhouse last year as well? Um, yeah, Friction played uh, a show at Cabaret for good shows with That's with right. Gel, and uh, I think the Sex played and mm -hmm. rivaled Envy, and um, yeah, so I was at Madhouse, and that was like a blast. That was just so fun to go from like room to room. Um, and I remember, you know, like, cause we were just there, like Max um, and Tony and uh, like everybody um, was, I remember going into like the green room for Madhouse and they like gave us food and beer. And I was just like, like, I'm so excited to be a part of it this year. Like actually, because um yeah, the way, like, the email that we got, like, do you have any dietary restrictions? I'm just like, yo, these guys are the best. Like, this yeah. is so sweet. Um, I know that's how they do it in Europe. When you go to Europe, that, like, yeah, will feed you, and it's just, like, a totally different level of hospitality. Um, but I think it's, like, so sweet, the way that those guys run the fest. Um, so cool. Yeah, it's, uh, the lineup is so interesting this year. Like as compared to last year where it was like very hardcore forward for the most part. Yeah. And this year it's like everything from like reality denied and like SOV style, like breakdown shit. Mm -hmm. You've got mil spec and then oi, like you have Beton and uh Puffer playing. Like it's such a strange mix of music, but I'm very excited to see how yeah. the crowd responds. I think it'll be great. I think it'll be great. I, I respect the unity. Um, yeah. I think that's a perfect space to bridge the gap to, you know, mm -hmm. um, having just more bands, you know, you have a four band bill and things are different. It's, it can be a little weird, but no, I think it'll be great. It's going to be fun. I was very yeah. pumped when they announced that you guys were going to be on, um, yeah. that friction Dude, was, was going to be on. Um, to be uh to be asked it was fucking great i'm bummed that i'm that we're not going to be uh in town on the night of your set you're playing on the thursday yeah we're on thursday um Damn. which very excited about that that we got added to the um like the kind of local show where it's mostly yeah. just, it's all the lifers bands um but it's going to be i think it'll be very fun it'll be a very like hometown crowd fuck yeah no that's so sick um yeah yeah i've only caught you guys once i um i was sick like i got randomly ill the night that you guys came to toronto um but i wanted to come out you to guys the styles a, a toronto style yeah yeah and then you guys were i i heard like uh alec was saying that you guys were gonna play the cloned release show in toronto but then i saw the lineup and you weren't on it and i was like damn 
I, I, I had to pull out of it for certain reasons that I am a little ashamed to say is because I, I, um, Silverstein is like one of my wife and I's favorite bands ever. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, and when they announced that they were coming to Montreal on like, uh, an album reunion, I know how much you mm -hmm. love reunions, but it was an album <laughs> reunion for an album that I don't even care about. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I like bought VIP passes for my wife and I like to meet the band and stuff like that. Just cause oh, like, no way. dude, so I've been listening to, we've been listening to Silverstein since I was like 12 when, yeah, yeah. when, um, discovering the waterfront. And I remember being at FYE, which was like sort of the same thing as HMV. Okay. Uh, like the music store. And I bought, yeah. uh, when, uh, when broken is easily fixed. Okay. And like with the robot holding his heart. And so I've been listening right. since that fucking first, like, album yeah, 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 with the shitty vocals. And no, dude, you need to, like, that's a totally valid reason to pull out yeah, of a show. So, so that's, they were yeah. like, oh, we're playing the 20th, like, the Cologne shows the 25th. I was like, boss, I cannot play that show. Can't do it. <laughs> dude. I don't know. Knowing how I feel when I see bands that I truly love, like, do not miss out on that j just to play another set with your band that is going to play like a million more shows, you know, it's not yeah. worth it. But yeah. Yeah. It was fun. The, the Montreal show with dear God was so good. Yeah. That looked dope. Um, that venue is cool. I've never been there. You should go. It's so Turbo. small. Well, wait, what's it called? It's turbo house. Turbo house. It's small. eh? It's like 120 maybe cap. Okay. That's cool. That's sick. I love, I love me a good small room, you know, shit. Um, even better if there's no stage. Yeah. You're a no stage kind of guy. I like floor shows, but really that's just me. Yeah. I like playing floor shows cause I like feeling like, like everybody's at the same level. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I don't know. I like being seen uh, and I'm short. Like, I, I don't know how tall, I can't remember how tall you are, but if it's a floor show and I'm not at the front, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> nothing. You so, just disappear into the. Into yeah. The <laughs> and I always think of it like, um, when I'm at, when I am at the back, which is rare. Like I like to, I always take up space because I'm a small guy, you know, it's not, you gotta make yourself wide to make yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when I'm at like the back of a show and I'm like, damn, people paid like 15 bucks to, <laughs> Stare at some heads. <laughs> it's like um, short people uh like things that like taller people don't worry about like my wife is is very short and so she's yeah. like she likes standing right at the edge of the pit like where the kind of horseshoe is yeah. she'll stand like right where the the horseshoe like pinnacles mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i'm like are you sure no, you want to stand there she's like yeah because then i can like protect myself and see when like people are coming and yeah all this stuff so it makes sense yeah yeah, yeah. No, that is usually where I reside. Um, yeah. And for the most part, I've stayed safe. <laughs> I hate seeing like photographers get hit like that though. Oh dude, that's, it's such a bummer. Yeah. Like it's a double edged sword. Cause, um, you got to stay out of the way, but, um, also capturing the moment. There's some, there's a beauty to that. You know, mm -hmm. you want, I don't know. Like, I'm I'm all about like the I don't know, the media. Like I, I love yeah. seeing photos from a show, you know. Um, but yeah, when I see like a photographer get wrecked, I um, I feel bad. You know, yeah. the gear they're putting themselves they know they're putting themselves in harm's way. So like to get targeted like that is like um, it's brutal to see. <laughs> it's, it's fucked up. Like I've definitely accidentally like not really hit, but like, I've definitely, you know, knocked into photographers before on accident, mm -hmm. like on a side to side. But when I see somebody like just straight up, like multiple hits targeting a photographer, there, there's like a blood boiling kind of like energy that I, I'm like, can totally. you not, could you not do that? Could you not just ruin this for everybody? Yeah. So no, totally. It can be, it can be rough, you know, I'm glad I'm not a photographer. I know it's hard on like, the um, I mean, I do think like I would have, I would understand like where to be in that kind of thing. But, um, 
I feel bad for the people who love taking photos and then they get into hardcore and then um, they're definitely just so excited and then to just get like schooled by someone who just wants to, I don't know, put them in their place, which they don't, which I think being put in their place, like, it's just a talking to. Like, I feel like so many times I've heard of like, hey, like, you know, take your photos, but like do it like the, you know, like verbally like teaching the etiquette and not teaching the etiquette through breaking their camera. Yeah. The yeah. camera is worth a lot of money. Like don't break a photographer's camera, please. Yeah. So, but yeah, shout out to all the like photographers that like, like there's some good photographers going around lately. Like, um, do Praff. Who's that? David Praff. Oh dude. He's awesome. The master. He's so, and then he does like these edits that are like wonderful. I can spoil photos. this for you. I'm going to spoil. I, I, it's not, the artwork's not out yet, but the new Bruiserweight single is a Praff photo. So sick. It's one yeah, of the he, edits he did. Sorry? It's like one of his like papery weird edits that he does. So tight. Yeah. No, he's, he's amazing. And um, yeah, you hardly know he's there. Same with, um, there's this guy, Analog Digital Obscurity. Uh, Yo. Hunt. Yes. The homie. He shot his uh, Brampton for us. Fantastic. Sorry? He shot Brampton for us. Yeah, he's um he's amazing. He's amazing. When I see him at a show, I'm like, well, I know I'm getting some good photos back. Like he did capture some very unflattering faces. <laughs> yeah. During the if set, you're not but... looking like shit when you perform, then you're not performing good. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a photogenic person. I don't think there's a single live photo of me where I'm like, I like that in terms of like my physical appearance, but you know, it can be rough, especially the hardcore stuff when you're like, ah, you know, mm -hmm. my yeah. favorite is like the weird open mouth faces. Oh my God. I have. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, when I do vocals in real world, I can't hide behind like my hands you know, because I'm just there. So, like, I get this, like, crazy, like, double chin, like, because I, I sometimes like to do some, like, guttural, like, growls and low stuff. And I look, I look like I'm sucking a dick. <laughs> like yeah. You got to grow your hair out long. That's why you got to have the hair on the side so that yeah, it covers. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, dying um, fetus style. Yeah. <laughs> All hair or no hair? <laughs> Both. Wear a hat. Yeah. If you wear a hat, it kind of shadows if you have, like, the lighting is true. right. So true, 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 true. You got that? <laughs> yeah. Um. But, yeah, I uh, this has been a lot of fun, Noah. Yeah, dude, thanks for having me on. This was, um, yeah, this is sweet. Super chill. Yeah. No, it was nice chatting. Um. um so you see you at the house? Oh, dude, for fun? sure. It's going to be a good you'll, you'll, You're going to be, like, attending oh, the fest. Yeah, so I'll, I'll go ahead and say this now, too, for people that are interested. Um, I won't have cold brew. That's going to bum a lot of people out. I'm not going to... Because last year I was selling cold brew coffee, like, for the oh, fest. Oh, dude. Um, That's so sick. I will not have it this year unless I can figure something out. But it's, mm. it's like, kind of last minute. Um, what I will be doing is doing man-on-the-street-style like interviews in between sets with uh like random people oh sick like hard lore fest recap yeah thanks Bye. yeah just go ahead and throw that one in there yeah it's definitely no, not sorry. a copy of <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's fucking awesome that's awesome yeah. so if uh if anybody wants to give their two cents um and tell me what their favorite coffee order is then find me at the fest Fuck yeah, yeah i'll be there the whole time sick it's gonna be so much fun dude i can't wait i can't wait the double stage it's gonna be epic the yeah if you don't use that double stage then you're a poser for everybody yeah. listening yeah if you don't make, <laughs> take advantage of that then you're a poser <laughs> learn how to stage dive in that moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's there for you yeah um before we go i just have one last question i usually ask what your favorite city for beans and breakdowns is but uh, you're not really a beans guy. So 
let me know what's your favorite city for breakdowns. Like what city has the best breakdowns? Or oh, yeah, like um, the best like show experience, but I was going with breakdowns. I like breakdowns. Oh, okay, okay. Well, if if I may, I'll, I'll answer it because I because when you first asked that, I was like, I, I know what I'm going to say, or like at least like like the Delaware like surrounding area, like Year of the Knife, Vicious Embrace, like that guitar player and like Gridiron. I don't know if they're Delaware, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like Simulacra or whatever. How you, how you say that band? Oh. Um, th those riffs are top tier. I, I think like um, that crew, like on another level, in my opinion. Foreign hands, yeah, foreign hands, just immaculate. Good shit. Good shit. Um, and then my favorite city for fucking um, like moshing and throwing down. Hmm. It's like a tough question. I mean, hmm. hmm. Probably like Toronto. Uh there there was um but friction a while back, like before the pandemic, we went to um it was like New Haven, Connecticut. Oh, yeah. And they had some dope moshers, like style of the wazoo. Um, I remember I was like, can I look as fresh as these kids? Like probably not. So I, I don't know if I got in there, but it was like a massive room, very similar to the space that uh bruiser way played in Hamilton. Okay. Like just like, a, it, it was like a rehearsal space. And then that was like their big, like showroom. Um, and these kids were like, like the show was not packed whatsoever, but these kids were like taking up space. That was tight. I don't know if, uh, People are still moshing like that there, but that was cool. From yeah. what I've heard, that scene has gotten even bigger. Fuck yeah. Like it's part of like a greater New England scene, like the Sick. New Haven. It kind of crosses into New England, but you know Lumpy from Days yeah. is he's mm -hmm. in like that area now. Okay, sick. And he was saying that like the straight edge, like all ages scene has just gotten so big between like Connecticut, New Hampshire, and like yeah. Mass. Like that mm -hmm. area is just like pumping out fucking shows. Balmora is like, I think from that scene. Oh shit, that band is um you got like Broken Val, fucking sick yeah. band. Um I'm going to miss like a bunch of them. There was a band I guess like I really liked Nomad. I know they had some shit happen recently and that they're not I don't think they're doing anything again because of reasons, but I really liked that um hmm. that brand of like really heavy metalcore, Straight Edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the Straight Edge New England scene is fucking hype. It's sick. So tight. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go back there. Yep. I like see what the, see what's up. <laughs> see what's up. What's up. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Styling and wiling. That's all it's got to be about. Totally. Um, Noah, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank I'll, you, Grayson. Uh, I'll be seeing you soon. And uh, yeah, I guess that's all there is to say. Have a, Fuck have a great Super Bowl party. Yeah, man. Enjoy, enjoy your night and the rest of your day. I'll see you, uh, two weekends two weekends oh is it two weekends holy shit yeah it's soon that's very soon yeah cool all right man i'll see you there thanks for listening to this episode of beans and breakdowns I want to say a huge thanks to noah for hanging out on the podcast be sure to check out one of the mini projects that noah is a part of friction is playing madhouse coming up today is the first day so if you have your tickets we will see you there be sure to check out nine million they just put out an audio tree so perfect just released some music be sure to check those out really really great projects all around if you've enjoyed the podcast please subscribe and leave a review you can find out more information about the podcast by following us on instagram at beans and breakdowns or on the web at beans and until next week be sure to stay caffeinated and wake the fuck up